What up guys, welcome back to Quadratic. On the shelf today we're taking a look at the DJI Spark. Now, this I'm sure you'll know, it's been around for a while, but I've just got my hands on it and I wanted to do a bit of a review of it. I actually got this from Gearbest, they decided to send it me, so thank you very much to them. You can check out the link in the description to Gearbest, but do be warned that if you go by DHL, you're going to have to pay import tax. So don't select DHL because you'll get um, probably like another 50 quid or so import tax. I'll also leave a link to the DJI website if you want to purchase it straight from them because it's about the same price. So I'd probably suggest getting it from DJI directly. Uh, I've also gone ahead uh, and purchased the controller. You can also get the Flymo bundle, which is a good bundle, and I would suggest that because you really do want the controller if you're going to be getting this Spark because it just opens up a lot more options, and it's something that I would really suggest. Uh, but I got um, just sent the normal version and then purchased this separately, so you can do that as well if you want. Anyway, let's take a very quick look on the bench at the specs because I'm sure you've heard all about it already. Uh, and then we'll go out and do some flight testing and see how this thing handles. And we're also going to whack it on here. You might be able to see we've got sports mode. So we're going to try it on that as well. Let's go check it out. Okay, so I've decided to skip the setup on the bench because we've all seen this and it's been out for quite a while, so I'm not going to go that in depth into that. I wanted to kind of talk about the video footage because I've been sort of impressed and sort of left lacking with this. Um, there's quite a few good things about it and quite a few bad things about it. So we're going to take a look at some of the footage, some of the different settings on this and see what it's like. So first things first, this is so, so easy to get set up. It's really quite intuitive and it is really, really good. I would would, however suggest getting that controller with it because it's a bit fiddly and a bit annoying to control with your phone but if you do just want to have a quick sort of selfie drone uh, just something you can whip out your pocket maybe whip out a backpack and set up with your phone then it is relatively easy but if you're going to be wanting to do it for more than sort of a quick flight here and there I'd suggest getting the controller because it's a lot more easy to use uh, and it's obviously going to get you much much better shots uh, and sort of more cinematic look on there but like I say it is really really easy and you can see just how easy it is to get sort of cinematic style shots on this. This was after me just messing about for a few minutes. It was really, really easy to get this set up and you can see it's really nice and stable. However, there does seem to be a bit of a problem with the camera on this with the auto ISO because turning into the sun, it does seem to get sort of washed out a little bit and go really, really dark as you'll be able to see just there. And then it comes back light again, which is a bit annoying. But, you know, nevertheless, I'm still figuring out um, all the best settings for this. So hopefully we'll be able to alter that a little bit more and set it up a little bit better. But overall, from the initial out of the box, this barely takes five minutes to set up. It is really, really easy to do. So there's quite a few nice features about this sort of active track and stuff. What you're seeing now is the active track without me moving. And it's just sort of circling me around, which is really nice. You can change sort of the angle that you're circling, the speed as well, the radius of the circle. And of course the elevation on this as well. So that is quite good. And there's quite a lot you can do. So if you're sort of standing on the top of a mountain. You can get this circling around you. Get it really high and far out. And so that will look really great. And of course you can change the camera angle on this as well. But another big drawback about this is the two axis camera gimbal. It's not three axis like the Mavic. I know this has been sort of touted as their replacement for the Mavic. And mini Mavic. But it seriously isn't. This is nowhere near a replacement for the Mavic. But you'll be able to see in this video. This is something I'm really Really impressed with is the wind resistance because you could see in the trees there how windy this was and this is a seriously seriously good at resisting the wind this must have been maybe 20 30 mile an hour wind I might even say uh, and so you can see it's not even moving it's still really really stable uh, that camera gimbal as well helping manage stay on there uh, keeping it quite stable so overall I'm quite impressed with the wind resistance you'll be able to see a little bit again the ISO auto white balance and things not being perfect on here and another thing I'm having a little bit of lacking uh, is the colour. I'm not finding it amazing. You know, this is a really, really sunny day, so thankfully the colour was quite vibrant on this. But, you know, if it's sort of overcast, there's a little bit of um, cloud in the sky. The colour on this is not going to be amazing if you're not putting anything in post-production. So all of this here is without any... Um, Colour correction in post-production, this is just what it looks like. And it's quite good because, like I mentioned, it is really, really nice and sunny. So it is got that good colour on there because of the sun. But this is when it's um, sort of on a 
quite overcast day, you'll be able to see. The left hand side is just standard footage where the right hand side I've added a little bit of colour correction, nothing massive, uh, just to show you it does improve it quite a little bit even when you add a slight bit of colour correction on there. So this is again some nice clean footage. The um, obstacle avoidance is working quite well on this. It detects up to about 3 metres away I think. It's just straight in front. There's nothing at the sides of this for obstacle avoidance but nevertheless it is quite good. However, this again was another windy day and I did have a problem once I was reaching sort of the top of the trees here. This was no more than 100 or 200 meters away. I was already getting a weak signal, which is quite annoying. So um, I sort of, you'll see notice again the ISO there going to completely black on the ground there, which is very annoying. So about this point, I'm about, like I said, 200 meters away and I've completely lost signal at this point. It's starting to auto return to home because it's lost signal, which is not really good. I know it's within trees and it is a bit of a windy day but this is still not really good especially when it's saying it can get sort of um, up to maybe near a kilometre transmission range this was nowhere near that and I was really quite disappointed with that but again probably quite a bit to do with the trees uh, you could maybe get one of those booster things that goes on the transmitter um, and that would sort of boost the signal a little bit but again you can notice the quite stark color difference here it does look quite pale and washed out on the color um, of the left hand side which is where it's got no color correction but nevertheless you know it's still pretty decent I guess it's upload worthy but if you're going to be doing anything sort of cinematic on here you're going to be wanting to do a lot of color correction and maybe a bit of sharpness as well because this is only being 1080p when I'm editing this on a 4k monitor it doesn't look as sharp as I would like it and you can see sort of when you pan around that it's a bit juddery I think because it's sort of low frame rate this isn't absolutely fantastic but it's got you know pretty pretty decent camera and definitely great stabilization on this as known with most DJI products so this is doing a little bit of the active track just following my brother here and it works quite well you know it, I've not tried it on anything faster than sort of just a quick jog but it does work okay until you go directly underneath it and I found this a couple of times it just loses you completely if you go directly underneath it so unless you're really up high um, or quite far away this is not amazing on active track but it does still manage to keep you quite in the middle and quite in the focus so long as you just don't go directly underneath it because it doesn't seem to be too good at hanging on to that sort of um, uh, just going underneath it directly. And here's a little quick test of the sport mode. This thing is quite good. It's quite fast. I can't see it being 50 kilometers. Um, I've not managed to go that fast yet, even though I've gone full whack, but I guess it was quite a windy day. Um, but yeah, it still manages to be kind of stable on sport mode uh, and definitely fast like you can see in the image here. But again, um, it's not amazing. It's sort of because you've got that very limited second axis on the gimbal. When you tilt from side to side in sport mode, um, you just can't compensate for that with the gimbal. So it is um, sort of very jittery and very wobbly. But nevertheless, you know, this is a pretty decent quad for the price. And of course, the size as well. I'd like to see some sort of more... Um, a bit more of a real mini Mavic, sort of maybe shooting in 4K with that three-axis gimbal, um, and I would be thoroughly impressed. But at the moment, it's sort of lacking a bit um, in terms of the camera quality uh, and the gimbal. But, you know, it's still very, very steady. It produces a very nice image um, with a bit of color correction in uh, post-processing. So I'm impressed, but left lacking to be honest and I think it's um, a little bit expensive for what it is but hopefully DJI can produce sort of a second version of this upgrade it quite a bit um, and maybe produce some more better features on there because at the moment it is lacking a little bit it's nothing I'd say professional level um, if you can want something professional I definitely go for the uh, DJI Mavic or the Phantom but if you are on a very very strict budget then I could suggest using this because it does still produce good results and nice stable image as well that you're not going to get on sort of a handheld gimbal especially going uh, quite high into the air couple other things about this, I tried the tripod mode and that actually worked out quite well. It reduced a lot of the shakiness and the judder that you get when you're sort of panning and it just keeps it really stationary and gives them for some really, really nice slow shots, um, sort of some wide angle panning and things like that. It works really, really well. But of course, that is a really, really slow thing. So unless you want to speed anything up in post-production, then you're going to have some slow panning on your footage. But it does do it really, really steadily and really, really quite sublime. So that is 
is a really nice touch. But, however, gesture control is an absolute nightmare on this. I mean, I could get it to work, you know, it was very convoluted, there was a lot of different things you could do, and it was all sort of feedback through the LEDs on the drone, there was no beeps or anything, so it was quite hard to understand, and pretty much useless if you don't have the manual there with you to sort of remember and understand all the different things, and what the feedback is from the quad, um, and all that thing, so I would say, avoid this for gesture mode, uh, gesture mode, because it really really isn't up to scratch at the moment it's quite convoluted in the sense that there's so many different things you can do and it's also quite hard for the quad to realize quite a few of the gestures um, and they're sort of annoying gestures as well they're not completely sort of um, something you'd think to do for taking a selfie or things like that they're a bit annoying so I would say stay clear of gesture mode get um, get the controller uh, don't bother with your phone because it's quite fiddly to do it on your phone as well um, but it is quite good to do it on the controller I found myself sort of forgetting to use all the buttons on the controller because I've just been using them on my touchscreen um, so it is good to have sort of the option of having both of those as well uh, and of course you can get the FPV view um, even though it does tend to cut out like I mentioned earlier it cuts out a little bit um, from time to time if you're sort of obstructing the view with like trees like I mentioned earlier or there's some quite strong winds as well so anyway all in all I'm quite impressed with this but sort of left wanting a little bit more from it especially with all the hype and the people saying it was exactly like the Mavic but a mini version because it really isn't. I'd like to see sort of a 4k version of this and maybe a three axis gimbal so hopefully DJI will produce something in the next year or so that's just an upgrade to this with a lot more features packed into it. Overall I'm impressed but I'm also left lacking and sort of wanting a bit more out of this. Um, so anyway that's a very quick review, a bit of the footage review as well uh, because it is good but like I say it's not fantastic. So anyway thanks for stopping by guys, be sure to check out the links in the description and I'll see you next time. Peace out.